All right. Um, so, you know, so we're doing our game design project, and I've uh, I recorded this video to kind of show us where we were. Um, but I want to go behind the scenes and just talk about how we create what we're creating here. Let me just first go through and show you what we have. Um, all right, so I'm going to say Frasier and member ID. This is all based, when you run it through the game, it's all based on logging in, which is using something called a session variable. And that is a server side thing. Most of the stuff that we've been learning up to this point is um, browser side. So like HTML, your browser takes the code and translate it. it tra your browser tra takes the cascading style sheets and translate it. The browser takes the JavaScript and translate it. But what server side stuff is um, when it your computer interacts with the, a database and produces the code, right, the HTML and the style sheets and the JavaScript, and then the browser interprets. Um, so when we upload a file, we're uploading an HTML file, but what we've done in the course three, right, the HTML5 and database stuff, is talk about how databases can be used to store information. And this game, any game where you're going to want to have interactivity between people who are on different computers, the information needs to be stored somewhere, right? So right here, this is all browser side stuff. And um, so we have, you know, there are a bunch, and I'll show you all this stuff. There's a bunch of uh, stuff on this one page, and basically I hide and show sections using JavaScript uh, based on what I click, right? If I click this, then I hide the inventory and I show the map. If I click this, I show the inventory and hide the map. Right here is a list of items that are generated based on uh, what I've entered into the database. And I select what item I want to add to my startup. And then I click this update my inventory and it takes this list. You see over here, as I, ch as I change things, this is something I'm showing myself, which is basically everything I click. When I click over here, it updates this information. And this is all part, what I'm showing right now, these codes and this over here, is all part of me just debugging things uh, to make sure that it works uh, going forward, right? Because sometimes I'm like, well, wait, it's not working, so what's going on? And I, so I show it to myself. All this is, is cleaned up in the game. All right, so then I click Update My Inventory, and you see here these are alerts. Now, we learned about alerts in JavaScript, right? The good thing about alerts, sometimes with JavaScript, when you press a button if nothing happens it doesn't say oh well here's why here's what you're, you're missing a semicolon here or you're missing a quotation mark here that's not the way it works so you have to put in or you you can put in these alerts in order to so you can sort of follow the path right so every time it it, it the uh, function runs a specific line of code it tells me what's going on all right so all that stuff of course I'll remove and right here what it does is it says, okay, here's the inventory of things, and then you can click start game. But I'm doing this all, I'm getting this to all happen automatically, meaning that once you run one function, it calls another function. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go over some basics today, and then I'll record another video where I go into some of the other more complicated things, and then I'll go into some other um, more complicated things as we, as we go. But just be aware that, you know, by the end of this game design series, you're going to know how to create every element of this game. All right, so it switches over here, and then you see that it, it it's alerting this information, and it populates over here. So let me explain one thing. So everything right now is going on in this browser until I do an update, in which case I'm not only um, just talking here, I'm sending this information up to a computer so it can get stored. Like, for instance, I want to store what items I selected. Why is that important? Well, here's an example of why it's important. So let's say this is me, and I can move by clicking these buttons. Watch what happens if I try to click this one. I get a message, you can't move there. You can only move to a square immediately next to you. So we'll look at the code, we'll look at the piece of code that, that indicates that you can only, you know, it basically checks and sees, sees what is uh, eligible. But like right here, I've got, I'm right next to this person, 
So I want to, I've set up a piece of code, whereas if I click here, it will move me there. If I click here, it checks to see, is there somebody else already there? And if it is, then it's going to assume that you want to trade with him. So watch. So what it does now is it does propose trade. It shows what you have, and then it shows what that other person has. And then I click, I want to choose, um, select water and strawberries. Now you see that that just went away. Watch. This is going to go away again in every five seconds. And that's a little bit of a bug. But what it's doing is every five seconds, the browser checks the computer or checks the server to see whether anything's happened. Now, what it's doing is it's checking to see, you know, has anybody moved, right? Has anybody traded something so they don't have it anymore? But I have it set up here where it, it, um, you know, recreates this little item right there. So it keeps doing it. That said, it's not that big of an issue because all I'm trying to do here is trade. So you see right here, I said, I'll trade all these things and I'll trade them for whatever, raw meat. And then I propose this trade at this point, watch what it does is it takes my information, updates the server, and then gives me a list of all the trades that are available, right? Now that can that's hard to say because I've got a lot of junk in here. But then whoever is on the business end of that trade, right? The, so I propose the trade and let's say whoever that was that's got the raw meat over here is gonna approve it, watch, approve. And it again alerts just so I can see what's happening. And now, you see, my inventory changes. Now this is a little buggy right now, I'm still working on that, but my inventory changes. And what probably would happen is it would just take me automatically back here and now I'm you know, in this situation, right? Okay, now just quickly, because I do want to show you some stuff, just quickly, you have these attack, def you know, these combinations and stuff that we've talked about. Well, let's just look at one of these. Um, this is going to be ugly, but let's just look at one of these uh, attack by poisonous wasps. Remember, it shows you what's going on here. And then if we go to on the map an area like this, then it shows me a landslide and it tells me the result. And then what we want to have happen is that it, depending on what happens to me, it adjusts my health and energy and whatever. And we have this whole thing, right, where we can tick things up. And you see how it keeps changing? Watch, every five seconds it's going to update. Because I don't have it set up where when I make a change like this, it updates. Okay, so all kinds of stuff. But let's just take a look at a few basics.